Oh, shoot. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, shoot. Hey, guys. What's going on? It's me, Jim. So, guys, uh, you guys are a little early for this review. So, um, in the meantime, let me go freshen up while a gameplay montage of the game we're going to talk about today plays in the foreground. So, give me one moment, guys. I'll be right back. What's going on guys, it's me Jim, your host. So guys, I am fully ready for this review. I got my pack watch on, wearing my watermelon shirt, and now we're gonna talk about Crisis Force, released in 1991 by Konami for the Famicom. So guys, let's talk about the game itself. Let me uh, grab a seat though. So yeah guys, the story in Crisis Force. So Crisis Force is the tale of two high school kids who are brother and sister. They are adopted by some archaeologists who were found in the lost continent of Mu. Yes, Mu, I'm not making that up. Some aliens show up to destroy and conquer civilization itself. The aliens are here, they destroyed the lost continent of Atlantis and Mu. So it's up to you and your flying battleships to go and destroy these alien forces and bring peace to the world. So Crisis Force offers gameplay of you move and you shoot and you dodge enemy bullets. What more do you want? There's co-op. That's right, the game offers couch co-op, so two players simultaneous play is always a welcome thing in this kind of game. Yes, two players simultaneous co-op, the gameplay takes a skyrocket to the fun zone makes the game oh so much more fun. Plus as well, the frame rate does take a dip, which is unfortunate, but hey, it's the technical limitations of the NES. But you take what you can get here. Your ship does start off with two special weapons. So you get a machine gun and you also get a laser type weapon. Your ship does have special forms as well. So those special forms allow you to shoot both diagonally, vertically, and you can also power up your guns as well. So you can power up your laser and your machine gun. Each one does something very, very different. I highly recommend experimenting for your own playstyle, just to see what works for you. For me personally, I like using the side lasers because they do semi home in on enemies, which is pretty goddamn nifty on higher difficulties. Though I did find out that the ringlet, the circle ringlet that you get around you, does cancel out shots. So it does lead to me being a little reckless and a little more daring in terms of my own gameplay. So the fact that the game does force you to play around with different weapon types and see what works for you is an absolutely stellar thing. Plus too, once you collect a certain amount of a special power up, your ship does transform into a phoenix of goddamn death where you fire lasers, you fire beams, they home in, they deal a ton of damage. You get a countdown right down here on the corner of your screen. Every time you take a hit, you lose around 10 seconds of time. Transforming, especially during a boss fight, is absolutely badass. I cannot stress how much I greatly enjoy transforming and just absolutely unleashing hell amongst all the enemies and just completely decimating everything in your line of sight and rounding off your arsenal in a crisis force. You do have a wide selection of bombs. Depending on your ship type that you use, you have a cluster bomb, you also have a bomb that explodes and increases in size. Also, you have a ninja vanish, which I'm not gonna lie, is absolutely badass. Oh yeah, and it should go without saying that obviously these bombs do erase enemy shots, so do use them because they are absolutely necessary, especially on the higher difficulty of play, because the game only comes in normal and hard, and depending on which difficulty you play on, you do get a different ending. The graphics and sound in Crisis Force. How does the game sound? How does the game look? So this being a Konami game, there are a few recycled sound effects that of course you're going to recognize from other Konami games, whether it's TMNT or Gradius, or Gradius, however you want to pronounce that game. You also have 
the graphics themselves, which are, well, pretty stellar. I mean, you can tell what everything is in the game. Granted, as I mentioned, there is kind of a lot that does happen on screen, especially on the two-player cooperative play. So because of that, the shots do get a little lost. So it is a thing that you do have to take in consideration. But the game does play well enough, and thankfully it's not completely fast as to where the shots are going to surprise you. You do have a bit of time to react to them when you see them. So the music is handled by three individuals. You have Yasuhiko Mano, Junchuma, and Kenichi Matsubara. Kenichi Matsubara is actually a part of the Konami Kukiha Club. I already know I'm pronouncing that pretty terribly. I'm so sorry if you speak the language, because I sure as heck do not, my dear, dear beloved viewer. The sound and soundtrack is pretty stellar, guys. In fact, I do listen to the soundtrack on my own without any influence. Literally cruising down or at the gym or at the store. And I get that level one theme in my head. My dear beloved viewer, the question is, is Crisis Force worth your time, your money, most importantly of all? Is it worth it? Can I recommend Crisis Force? What the heck is it available on? Can you get Crisis Force for your Nokia brick phone? Can you play Crisis Force on Sega? I mean, if you were paying attention to this video, then you know, no, it's not. It's clearly on Famicom. And the fact that it is on Famicom lets you know that this game was not translated, which, may I add, is kind of a bummer because there is a English translation of this game floating around now. So, can I recommend Crisis Force? Yes. If you like vertical shooters, two-player simultaneous co-op, which, yes, takes a dip in frame rate quite a bit sometimes, you like banging tunes, you like tight gameplay, then yeah, I highly recommend Crisis Force. Though, I do have to add, Crisis Force is one of those late Famicom games, that it being a late Famicom game released in 1991, literally Super Nintendo in full swing, Sega Genesis, Sega Mega Drive in full effect, then yes, I can recommend Crisis Force, but this game does command a pretty, pretty, pretty high premium just for the luxury and the pleasure to play Crisis Force. But thankfully, when you order Crisis Force, the game does come with a gold brick to let you know, hey, yeah, you're here to flex on your friends. Or so I would hope so with the amount of money I paid for it. For a loose copy. So if you see Crisis Force on eBay, you see it for 20 bucks, absolutely recommend sniping it. A incomplete copy of the game, so just card alone loose, is literally around 100 American freedom dollars. So, yeah. Good luck trying to get a physical copy. So obviously, you know, take the other route. Take that, as I will surreptitiously say to you, the emulation route. Because Konami clearly doesn't care about the series, or I should say, the one game in this series. So, emulate it. It's easily emulated. And with that, my dear viewer, I have to say, thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember, guys, you're loved, you're beautiful. Remember to stay absolutely radical, guys. And thanks for tuning in, guys. And I will catch you on the next review. So if you excuse me now, I gotta go take care of some business. I gotta, I gotta play this game again. This game is rad, rad, rad. And I gotta listen to that soundtrack. Because the soundtrack is also rad, rad, rad. So uh, I will be catching you guys in a bit. You guys have a good one.